Okay everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel today. We're back on GT Sport and we're back with update 1.25 that's added a new track that I'm really excited about. This is a track that was one of my favourite tracks on um, Assetto Corsa. So let's get into the update. When you load up the game, you're obviously going to get the screen to tell you that the add-on content for 1.25 has been added to the game. Included, I think it's eight or so cars have been added. Mainly quite um, old cars. There's no real, um, there's a couple of modern ca cars in there but nothing too modern. And then we get into the main one. Both versions, really, which I really enjoy, is the fact that both versions have been added for the Red Bull Ring. And um, it did state that you could race these um, versions in reverse on the PlayStation website, but that's not right. You cannot race them in reverse, as far as I can see so far from the test I've done. Also added has been obviously the last month's track added to the circuit experience. It's interesting that they're following the routine of doing a, a fake track and then a real track. Um, it seems to be so. The next track that's going to get added is going to be fictional, I'd guess. Um, it could be. Um, deep forest possibly because that is a track we know is coming to the game and was quite far on in development so that is one track we need to look out for possibly coming soon um, in an update so first thing I wanted to check was if they were going to check the change the daily races I looked and they haven't they've still got the same three races I was really excited to see if they were going to add two more variations with this update but it's not to be it's still the same basic three changes so going into the update we can see We've got the new cars that have been added. We've got the new track, which I'm so excited for. The Red Bull Ring is one of my favourite games on a set of course, um, tracks on a set of course. I love that track. It's such a good track. It's easy to learn, but quite hard to master. To get on the power early out of some of them corners, it's such a challenge, and I love that track. I can't wait to be racing that. And it's that this is one of the reasons it's a little bit frustrating that they've you know still got this weekly race system because we're gonna have to wait a long time to get that track on the daily races. And um, they've also made some network changes, so you can see the network ability of your connection when into sport mode i haven't seen exactly where this is yet but maybe when you actually enter a race they've also um, made some basic changes as well it says there for um within the game and added the scapes the brand central um stuff like that the new campaign gt leagues have been added with the new content obviously the circuit experience so then we're going to go to the bop changes now I'm a little bit disappointed with this. All they've changed is the Group 1 cars. They've reduced, basically they've just reduced four of the power cars down by 1%. Um, I, I understand why they haven't done the Ford um, in a way, but I think the Ford could have been done because no one's using it in FIA. The only people that could be using it in FIA for the manufacturers are people that are not SS rated. So they're not going to be getting to the World Finals anyway. So why they didn't just give that a 3% power um, decrease, I have no idea. The other cars, they obviously can't change because there's people using them within the FIA. So the Group 4 and Group 3 cars are going to get a BOP change probably at the end of um, September. Um, about the 10th 11th of september something like that i'd guess there'll be another update changing the bop of some cars but at the bottom there also has been adjusted it's a group three and group four cars have had their fuel consumption rates adjusted so that's interesting hopefully maybe they've adjusted some of these overpowered citrons and nsx's in the fuel a little bit looking at the new cars you can see that here's the um, ford race car from 1967 20 million credits going to cost you so I, for one, will not be buying this car um, anytime soon. I, you can see I've got 12 million left there. Um, I've bought quite a few cars. And I haven't got, I can't really, I don't really want to buy that. I can't even buy it anyway. You know, it's, it's just too much. And then we have the Shelby Cobra um, Daytona Coupe, the 1964 version. Very nice car. Lovely car, but again, 15 million credits. I get the feeling they've added these two cars in at this price to try and tempt people into buying them with um, transactions because... It's going to pretty much take up all your credits if you buy these cars, but so I'm not going to buy them. Um, I wouldn't use them too much anyway, even if I did buy them, because I'm more into the racing on daily races and the sport mode races. And these are the type of cars that hardly ever come up there. They'll be interesting to use for um, lobbies, but no one's going to have them with that type of price. And then we go through to the Volkswagen 1200, the, um, the Beetle, basically, and that's at least that's um, you know purchasable. It's not expensive. So you can buy that one. I, I haven't bought it yet because obviously I'm, I, haven't, I mean, I'm probably not going to race this anytime soon. Unless it's going to be in a public lobby. That's when I'd probably give that car maybe a run. And next is the Mini Cooper 50,000 credits. Not too expensive again. So another car, that'll be in a, quite a fun car, I think, to run. Once I've obviously got FI8 out of the way and I can do some streaming, maybe do some um, single make lobbies with some of these cars on some like short twisty tracks. It'll be interesting to drive some of these cars and just have fun, not really worrying about who wins and stuff and just having um, a good 
fun session with them in a stream somewhere um, sometime. Then we have the Abarth again, quite a cheap car. This is probably the only modern car that's been added in on this update, I think. Um, well, recently modern. Anyway, see so Abarth 500, 2009. So not a really, really modern car, but it's still... Um, it's I class that as a modern car anyway, but that's quite interesting. I've driven that on the set of course. Great fun on the set of course of that car, so it'd be interesting to see how it drives on this game. Then we go through to the other the fifteen hundred um, Bertone and um, from nineteen fifty two. A really old car and again this car is going to set you back um, 1 million credits and I ain't going to spend 1 million credits on that because I'm probably not going to use it but there are people out there that will want to drive these and then we have one car that I probably will get when I am next time I go on the game and I've got some free time because I do love the um, the Lancia Delta Integral um, great car I will buy that one when I'm probably back on and I've got some free time and FIA isn't on because I do love that car. So that one will be bought and it's not too expensive either. So reasonably um, priced. This car I did buy today. I got it 250000 It's the Amuse S2000 GT1 Turbo. A car that has pretty much been on every Gran Turismo that I've, I think I've played. Um, obviously, I don't know if it was on the really early ones, but it was on quite a lot of them. Um, I got it in white because that's the colour I think I used to drive it on the other games pretty much all the time. 250,000 credits, that's fair enough, I don't mind paying that. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to jump through to the Red Bull Ring, driving my Group 3 car for the Manufacturers Championship. We're currently leading the Mercedes Championship with this car um, in Europe, in the European region. So I thought I'd take it for a test drive at the Red Bull Ring, my favorite, one of my favourite tracks on sim racing. I love this track and I am so happy that this track got added. I brutally, to be honest, I did not expect any tracks to be added in this update I thought it was gonna be a fairly basic update and when I saw this yesterday that this track was coming I was so excited because this is pretty much aligning to my predictions of if you go back on my video uh, on my channel you'll see I did a uh, five tracks that might come to GT Sport in the future and I went for a very safe bet with Le Mans Red Bull Ring and um, Spa Spa's looking a bit unlikely now and um, Fuji Speedway and I think I did the um, Indianapolis track um, as tracks I think might come to the game because of the license, licensing ability. And so far, two out of them five have come within since I've done that video. So hopefully it's following the, the pattern that I expected of tracks from GT6. It's looking that way. So I expect possibly Fuji or the U, um, um, USA Motor Speedway, I think it is, um, to come at some point in the future and um, Spa's looking a little bit unlikely because of something to do with licensing costs for that track apparently apparently they're not willing to pay the amount that's required for it which is a bit disappointing but who knows it's it might, might still come in the future at some point but apparently it's very unlikely so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run through a lap of this track I know this track off by heart from a set of course and it's great that I can jump straight from a set of courses experience and go put a reasonably good lap in straight away on this game. The braking's identical, everything feels the same. Obviously, it's different physics, but the basics are there as you see. Going through the last corner, getting on the power nice and early. Looking for the 100 board is your brake reference for turn one. You need to brake a little bit short of that 100 board, just fractionally short. You'll see going down to third gear, braking just short of it. And staying in third gear, skim the apex of the curb, but don't be too aggressive on it. Use some of the curb on the exit, but again, not too much, and try and get a good solid exit out that corner and working your way up the long straight. This is the overtaking opportunity at Red Boring into the tight um, right hand corner. You're going to look for the 100 ball, breaking just before the 100 ball, exactly the same as SS of Horsa. Staying in second gear and try and take a wide line to try and square the car off so you can get on the power nice and early and then you get a better exit working your way then into the next corner which can also be an overtaking opportunity on the off cambered right hand corner braking just before the 100 board on the left hand side you see there down into second gear and you've got to be careful this is off camber you see how i slightly miss the apex just about get away with that but if you miss it too much you run off into the gravel on the left hand side now we're looking for the 50 board on the right hand side braking again just short of that into third gear and you really want to take a tight line and try and get close to the curb and then that enables you to get on the power nice and early and work your way without running too far wide braking just at the end of the curb down into third gear try and hug the inside line there on the apex 
and on the par nice and early using some of that curve on the right side and then working your way into the final two corners which again this corner breaking in between the 100 and the 50 board down into third gear use some of the curve on the right hand side and then on the power use some of the curve on the left and then really chuck it into this last corner I could have been more aggressive there wasn't too aggressive lost out a little bit you can see the delta going down a bit but a reasonably clean lap and uh, what an amazing track I love this track and uh, I can't wait to be racing on this track in a uh, competitive racing on the game it's a shame that we um, obviously the weekly system is on at the moment so we don't get to race these tracks as often because this track would have been great for me to add today or something but it's not to be going on to the shorter version driving the um, S2000 that I've just bought the, the, the one I've just bought from the new cars that have been added very tricky I remember this car having a lot of grip on old Grand Trismans but I put racing medium tyres on this and it, it, it just didn't have much grip but on the previous lap I had it all default set up how it would be with the um, AMG GT3 in a um, FIA race so obviously default setup racing hard tyres this I put racing medium tyres on put the BOP on though just to reduce its power so it's how it would be if it was in a um, competitive race really twitchy car it wants to drift every corner it just wants to slide out and I don't remember this driving like this on old Grand Tourism so I'm pretty sure this car used to be stable and grip but it's fun to drive and um, really requires a high skill level I think to get fully up to speed with this car because you've got to get used to having the rear sliding through the corners you can see even there once to slide out um, I put the brake balance all, to, all the way to the front to try and stop some of that and just try and keep the car a bit more stable but a fun car and a great um, I'm really happy they put this shorter version into the game because it's it's a great addition to the game and um, I you know some of these tracks tend to only have the long versions in the Nürburgring is another track that I really wish they'd put the sprint layout into because the sprint layout of the Nürburgring is a great addition it's the same story with the um, Circuit de la Sarf. Um, it'd be nice if they added the Bugatti version into that um, layout which is another obviously totally different track but um, I'm surprised they haven't added it in maybe that will be something they add in in the future it'd be nice if they did but i'm guessing it's all down to licensing why they can't add certain things in at um, certain times but anyway a great update some a positive update i didn't expect this content and um, hopefully once the fia season is finished um they're gonna start bop in some of these cars that need to do it sorting out in group four and group three cars and um, because then they can do it properly and it'll be back to fia testing so they'll start bop in and trying to get a balance and probably add in some new cars within them categories maybe for um, future updates and obviously i think the next track is going to be a fake track that uh, what i say a fake track but a fictional track it's the way they seem to be working these updates out is real track fictional track real track fictional track and um, it's interesting that they're keeping these updates coming for free it's great news for us and um, i can't wait to be racing on this track anyway thanks again for watching i'll be back with more gt sport fia races top split races and top 24 races very soon thanks again for watching everyone and see you soon